G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Tuesday afternoon here in Australia, so obviously sort of Monday evening stateside time and the markets seem to be holding up alright, up 2.9% which is not sort of too bad. You know, still generally just sort of ranging sideways, not a whole lot has changed. BTC dominance has actually dropped, it was 45%, getting up around 46 so we're down to just under 45 ETH dominance under 17%. And gas prices in the single digits which is really really good all right as we can see I mean it looks green at the moment it's looking pretty good the seven days you know have sort of turned around things are a little bit more sort of bullish at the moment but I am somewhat still skeptical about exactly where we are like particularly with the white cough accumulation phase that everyone says we're in right now it was obviously it was obvious sorry that we were in the white cough distribution but it all sort of became apparent after the fact. So now that everyone is pretty, you know, keen to believe we are in the Wyckoff accumulation phase, I just get the feeling like the big players are going to throw a spanner in that. There's no guarantees in life. They may be happy to, you know, kind of uh, play by that rule. But I would just be mindful that it could play out completely different and we have a, another big correction before that happens. But, you know, I say this all the time. For me, if Bitcoin is under any old all-time high, I'm happy to just continue dollar cost averaging into it. I don't really sort of care what the price is too much. Don't get me wrong. If it was 64000 uh, and now it's sort of trading at 62000 maybe not so much. Uh, but definitely when it's, you know, 50%, you know, less than what it was, you know, not that long ago, I'm more than happy to continue to dollar cost average. And again, I'll dollar cost average into it until it gets to whatever its bottom is and pretty much all the way up until it gets into price discovery. Once it hits price discovery, I'm not really putting as much into it, but that is predominantly where I'm you know, constantly putting my money, again, outside of Bitcoin being in price discovery. All right, so let's have a look in the top 100. What's done well? <sighs> Something's got to have done well. A lot's done well. All right, Kasama, 25%, nice. Bitcoin SV, don't know what's going on there, but it's had a good 25% pump. Compound, Elrond, Aave, Zilliqa, I mean, look, double digit gains across the board. Synthetics Network, uh, very, very nice. But I am mindful that we have been yo-yoing for quite some time. You know, we've seen a number of, you know, altcoins have 20%, you know, 10, 15% gains in 24 hours. And then you come back 24 hours later and they're down. They are still on a downward sort of trend. A lot of these, you know, gotten better over the last seven days. But I'd say a lot of this has got to do with this because we're looking at the seven days literally just the other day and they were all in the red. So I'd say a lot of this green has come because of what's happened in, in the last 24 hours. But the weekends are generally always bad. And Monday sort of morning is usually when the markets spark up a little bit, particularly if you know, we're still in a bullish trend. So maybe this is the indication that we are, but we still have to be very careful. But again, the total market cap is only up 2.9%. So that's not huge, but hey, this is looking pretty good in the altcoin market. What about losses though in the top 100? Anything been bashed about? Not really. I mean, Quant, uh, MDEX down a little bit, and then we're just into stable coins. So in the top 100, basically almost no losses in the last 24 hours. Hence why I prefer to invest in the top 100. They are generally the cream of the crop. Once you get outside of the top 100, not so much. But again, it's not to say that there's no decent projects outside the top 100, but the further outside the top 100 you get, you know, yeah, the less likely it is that you're investing in a good project, but it doesn't mean you're not. All right, so again, things are looking pretty good. Not too bad. Let's just refresh this. So Bitcoin, 34,000, just under 35,000 is not too bad. And Ethereum back up at 2,100, which is good. I mean, that got down to 1,800, I think nearly 1,700. So, I mean, you know, if you're lucky enough to buy any there, that was a really, really good buy. I bought a very small amount, just under 2,000. And I was lucky enough to get some Bitcoin just in the kind of 30,000s as well. Not a lot, but a little bit. All right, let's move on to the charts and have a look. All right, it's got to refresh, get itself ready. All right, so again, basically sort of here, we can see we're still ranging. We haven't broken that 42,000 and we haven't dipped below that kind of 20, you know, 
seven and a half twenty eight thousand dollar mark uh, just about there but again we are still on a downward trend we had that fake out broke back below now we've got another breakout but is it going to be a fake out can it last look again there's nothing wrong if this kind of breaks out and then come back and retest this and it doesn't matter if it does it you know somewhere down here even at 29,000 but what we want to do is make sure that we're no longer falling back under this line as long as we keep breaking out and then falling under they are just fake outs they're not breakouts so at the moment we're waiting to see is this a breakout or a fake out because again that looked like a breakout and then it just sort of crumbled and it was obviously a fake out breakout sounds much better to me but we'll have to wait and see all right some really really interesting stories that i found uh, that hopefully you find interesting as well so key bitcoin price indicator flashes its fifth buy signal in all of bitcoin's history so that sounds pretty good so we can go down here and it's called the puel hopefully i'm saying that right multiple so we can see that over bitcoin's history since 2010 thereabouts it's only been in this range five times so once here twice there three times here and they're going to call this four really you could call that two different times but they'll call this fourth and hey presto here we are again so it's definitely been down lower but the fact that it's only ever here made it here five times in all of bitcoin's history generally says that this is obviously a pretty good buying opportunity but that's not to say that it can't go lower though because we can see here i mean it, it got seriously low there and even here it bounced around here for a while and then went even much lower and likewise it really made it down to the bottom and these times not so much but that was considered one of the worst crashes uh, of all times and then this what we've currently been through is considered one of the worst retracements of all time outside of again when we've hit some kind of random blow off peak so at the moment it says that bitcoin uh, is a good buy it's not saying it's the best buy because it could definitely get lower and come down sort of into this kind of range but generally it's saying that it's a pretty good buy so something to keep in mind now again you can find a million different charts out there that are going to tell you something it doesn't mean they're 100 percent accurate again just because we're in this blue doesn't mean you can't see a whole lot of further pain before it starts to improve so just keep that in mind but as i said before you know if bitcoin is 50 percent less than where it's been previously i'm definitely happy to buy it and i don't care if it continues to go down i will continue to buy it on the way down because the more down it goes the more upside there's going to be for when it finally does go up and that's again none of this is financial advice that's just the way I see it. If it is 50% less than an old all-time high or 70 or 80% less, even better. That's when I want to pile into it. I don't want to be piling into something or trying to chase something where I've already missed you know, the, the big gains. So basically from here, once Bitcoin gets back to 64,000, I'm pretty much doubling my money. And unfortunately, people are going to pile into Bitcoin when they find out, what it's you know it's in price discovery and they think that's the best time to jump in when unfortunately it's not but again we've already spoke about that another very interesting story so craig wright so craig wright has finally won a legal dispute against cobra and now one of the most iconic bitcoin websites must stop hosting the bitcoin white paper so he's been you know saying all this kind of stuff that he's satoshi you know blah blah he's had all these law cases you know court cases i should say and he hasn't won one except for this one so bitcoin.core sorry bitcoincore.org complied with taking the white paper down a while ago but cobra which is a pseudon 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 pseudonymous i can't even say that <laughs> uh webmaster of bitcoin.org refused so bitcoin.org refused to do it now unfortunately for them to participate in this court case they had to identify themselves and they didn't want to so craig wright has actually won by default so bitcoin bitcoincore.org and now bitcoin.org cannot have uh, the white paper up there because they didn't want to identify themselves as what it came down to so we still don't know exactly who's running these uh websites but look in all fairness i think that's the best way for bitcoin i think it'd be preferable if we never know really who invented it uh you know it leads to 
just more of the awe about Bitcoin. I think if we truly knew, and particularly if that person or persons was, you know, easily persuaded by governments and all the rest of it to maybe do something and change something, Bitcoin would lose its aura. So for me, I'm happy for Bitcoin to stay that way. And I'm not saying whoever's running Bitcoin.org or BitcoinCore.org, uh, you know, are Satoshi themselves, but I just think you know, it'd be better if... Yeah, they stayed anonymous, much, much better. It, it, believe it or not, I think they'd actually be more trust in Bitcoin with them staying anonymous as opposed to them, uh, you know, if they are still about becoming known. And again, that way, no governments and, you know, regulators and all the rest of it can come in and try and change what Bitcoin is essentially about and take over and manipulate it and things like that. And again, Craig Wright, you won by default, mate. I mean, he's, just, he's an Australian. So normally I'd like to support Australians, but... He just seems like a bit of a nutter. But anyway, look, maybe he is Satoshi. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, moving on. This one I really like. So as the DeFi space grows, and I've said this a number of times, so do the rug pulls and scams. There's so many of them in DeFi. It's been unbelievable. There's been more rug pulls and scams in DeFi than anything else in this run. Basically, DeFi is kind of like the new ICO back in 2017. It's the big thing and everyone's piled into it and there's just been, you know, a, a number of them have been called, you know, oh, they were just hacks and there was, you know, problem with the tokenomics and this and that. They're rug pulls. They are straight up rug pulls and, and you know, they, they will be investigated. I have no doubt by someone at some stage and they will face, you know, the long arm of the law, as they say. But in saying that, there's still going to be good DeFi projects coming out from here, but it's just they're going to be far and few between. If they really are just copying something that's already been done, they really had better be, you know, just much better than the, you know, the original, I guess, or otherwise they're just not going to last. And unfortunately, a lot of people are just kind of jumping on the hype at the moment. The new DeFi project, and if you can get in early and get out early, you know, there's some crazy gains to be made. But there are some that have been around for a while and they're basically called the blue chips. And I spoke about this the other day. And this is where I really like to be putting my money if I'm investing in DeFi. If I see something new from the DeFi space coming out that's doing something different, maybe being innovative and creating something new, different story. I don't mind getting in on it. But if it's just the same as what we've already got and they haven't really done anything better than what we've already got, then other than maybe trying to get in early and, you know, getting in on the pump i'm not really interested in them but let's have a look at what decrypt have said are the DeFi blue chips so number one Aave. completely agree i think Aave is the number one it's i really like the project i'm invested in it i'm absolutely buying uh Aave, you know once we see the market sort of you know hopefully bottom out and it's looking like we might have bottomed out but again we'll have to wait and see so if i feel like the mo the market has bottomed i'll be getting heavily into the altcoins but i just need to see what bitcoin's going to do first but Aave, it's my uh probably i wouldn't say it's my favorite it's my second favorite but it's one that i trust it's been around for a really long time then they go on to here uniswap another one i really like uh, massive fan of uniswap again got myself a position in it i was lucky enough to buy it at basically sort of half price uh, it's gone down even further from there so i'm in the red in uniswap but i have no doubt you know once we get back into the rest of the bull market it's going to go you know well into profit for me and i really like uniswap so that was their number two number three sushi swap so again i don't really have any sushi swap because really to me it's just kind of you know another uni swap why do we need another uni swap unless they're doing something you know a lot better than uni swap then i'm more just going to focus on uni swap but look it is definitely one of the blue chips it, it it is it is up there with one of the more popular ones maker yep been around for a really long time i don't think maker's going to go anywhere it is kind of the fundamentals of you know DeFi uh, on the ethereum space Compound, same thing, been around for a really long time. I don't have any Maker. Uh, I bought some Maker and then I sold out uh, and I've never had any Compound. Not to say that I don't like Compound, I just simply don't have any. I feel like I missed it and you can't get into everything. But another really good project. Curve, same thing. Curve's been around for a long time. Uh, I don't have any Curve. I've you know wanted to get into Curve a number of times, but I just 
yeah, I keep finding something else. And again, that's not knocking curve at all. They are a really good project. Synthetics, this is my favorite. You know, I really like what it's about. I think, you know, derivatives are going to be massive. I like that they are already moving to completely sort of decentralized. They're not quite there yet. You know, they are decentralized compared to where they used to be and they're becoming even more decentralized. And there's a lot of big uh, updates coming for Synthetics Network, uh, well, not some, I mean, they are updates, uh, SIPs and all the rest of it, but also just lots of uh, innovation and things coming to it. And lastly, well, not lastly, but Yearn Finance. So obviously, you know, again, an absolute behemoth uh, in the space. And yeah, I would agree that they are the DeFi blue chips. You know, you could possibly throw some other ones in there, but if I was going to put my money into anything, I think this is a really good guide. Again, I've only got a couple of those. Synthetics, uh, Aave, Uniswap for me. Uh, big uh, fan of all of those platforms and have invested in them and will continue to invest in them. And look, you know, again, I like Curve. I really wish I had a position in it, but I kind of missed it. Uh, Compound and Maker, much the same. Really, Sushi Swap's the only one there that I'm not that much of a fan of because it really is just, you know, a copy of Uniswap, but pretty good guide. All right. Here we go. All right, so Jeffrey's uh, equity strategist expects accommodating US crypto regulation, unlike China's authoritarian model. So this is, you know, good for the space. And I, was, I mentioned some something on Twitter a couple of weeks ago. I said, imagine China basically kicks everyone, you know, most of the Bitcoin miners out and sort of, you know, over-regulates it and all of the rest of it. And then the US adopts it. Because there's this big race going on at the moment for who's going to be the financial supremo, particularly with you know new, you know crypto sort of stuff and stable coins and all the rest of it, and really China because they had so much of the mining there, they could have really taken a stranglehold on that if it took off worldwide. But now they've forced a lot of them out, and a number of them are moving to the U.S. And if the U.S. were to come up with favourable kind of crypto regulations, now not loose ones, they get they've obviously going to have to regulate it properly to protect the consumer and things like that but as long as they don't over regulate it and they are more favorable regulations i think the u.s could quite easily stay as the dominant force uh in the you know world financial system as well doesn't mean it'll really fix up the u.s dollar although it could you know depending on sort of how they structure it and maybe they use things like you know ethereum and bitcoin to help stabilize you know the u.s dollar and things like that not saying that's what's coming, but I definitely think uh, that would be beneficial for the US dollar and just the world financial system as well. All right, Jim Cramer. So we all know he bought Bitcoin and he got in around about sort of $10,000, I think, somewhere around about there. And then he said he sold a lot of it uh, recently. And now he's back in the space. So Mad Money's Jim Cramer moves from Bitcoin to Ethereum and says it's more of a currency. So it just goes to show how much he does and doesn't know. Unfortunately, he's probably going to make a ton of money buying into Ethereum because he's probably done that fairly recently. And he might even have got into Ethereum at, you know, sort of $1,800, uh, $1,900. And the chances are that Ethereum's probably going to go, you know, again, a lot of people are thinking 10000 maybe even more dollars. So, you know, you get in at 1800 and you start to sell around sort of 10000 you work it out, you've <laughs> nearly five extra money there. But the fact that he thinks uh, Ethereum uh, is more of a currency shows how little uh, he understands about the space. But I've got no doubt he's made a lot of money uh, from Bitcoin. Look, I don't know if he sold any at 64,000 and maybe sort of panic sold down near the bottom at 30 something thousand. The thing is, number one, he didn't sell at all. He just said he sold a lot of it. I'm sure he's still got plenty on the side and now he's decided to jump into Ethereum. I get the feeling like Jim Cramer is more just, you know, he's not into the fundamentals of it and you don't have to be. This is He's a trader and so he's probably seen a really good setup for Ethereum that will likely uh, outdo Bitcoin. But again, him calling it a currency shows that he doesn't understand the space. And in the end, if you're simply in it, you know, for the gains, what does it matter, your understanding of it and the fundamentals? If you're just trying to make gains, which I'm sure he does quite regularly, he's probably going to do extremely well with Ethereum. All right, so we spoke the other day. Oh, of course, this is going to be playing up. But anyway, we spoke the other day about, 
there was a billionaire over in Mexico who wanted to make his bank uh, the first to accept Bitcoin. So we see here a top Mexican official reiterated on Monday a ban of the use of cryptocurrencies uh, in the country's financial system. So you can't actually use them. They're not legal tender yet. So we said here cryptocurrencies aren't legal tender assets and aren't treated as currencies within the country's, within the country's current regulatory framework. Those bans are not expected to be lifted in the short term but they are looking at possibly making it legal tender as another a number of other countries are over in the uh, in the South American sort of region you know Paraguay like we already spoke about El Salvador and a number of other countries could be doing the same but at the moment Bitcoin and no cryptocurrencies are in that kind of uh, legal framework at the moment so they've still got some work to do before that can happen and last but not least this is a pain I had these all set up. All right, Fed Vice Chair says we should be saying yes to stable coins. Stable coins. <laughs> stable coins. And I would have to agree. I think this has uh, got a lot of merit to it. So US uh, Reserve Vice Chair Randall Char Quiles, I don't know how to say that, said at a bankers conference in Utah on Monday, the US should find ways to say yes to stable coins. When our concerns have been addressed, we should be saying yes to these products rather than straining to find ways to say no. Indeed, the combination of imminent improvements in the existing payment system, such as various instant payment initiatives combined with the cross-border efficiencies of properly structured stablecoins, could well make superfluous any effort to develop a central bank digital currency. Now, this is why the banks are pushing back on this. They really want control of it. There's kind of a system there that already works. Why would you have to go and try and develop something and all the R&D and everything that goes into it when there is already things there that work? You know, whether you like Tether or not, Tether's there and it works. USDC particularly, you know, they they seem like they're fully legit and they've, you know, tr tried to do everything they can to make sure they're regulated and all the rest of it. Yeah, why bring out CBDCs when you've got things there that already work? I would probably think that America should, you know, probably jump on the back of something that's already there. You know, yes, you're going to have to come in and, you know, there's going to be more regulation and all the rest of it. But I think USDC would be the best bet. I think they've already got something there that works. And then it would just save a whole lot of time and money. Don't get me wrong. They still have to, you know, do their checks and all the rest of it. And like I said, regulation comes in. But, yeah, I don't think we need, you know, those kind of CBDCs. I think there's already... The framework and the structure there that they could simply piggyback on I think that would be the much better way to go but anyway we'll have to wait and see and again I think that would really help you know the US uh, get on top of this whole CBD thing you know the yuan is you know it's in development USDC it's already there you don't need to develop it and again they've been regulating it and all the rest of it I think that would be the smarter move from the US uh, to simply again not so much take over it because they don't need to take over it but again just kind of get on board with those guys and go rightio you know here's the things we need to do to make sure that it's fully legit and all the rest of it and then they can simply run from there i think it'd save a whole lot of time and it would put them at the forefront of this whole you know digital space all right anyway that's it from me so not a whole lot going on again bitcoin still just kind of ranging but we haven't broken out you know, there's plenty of good buys for altcoins out there, but, you know, we need to really see what Bitcoin's going to do. We could see a big further retracement before we start to see some upside. But, you know, nothing set in stone. We'll have to wait and see. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train at the moment, and I'll see you next time.